Hello learners, welcome back to my channel Sradhas Physics. In this part, we will see the calculus of the variation and derivation of the Euler Lagrange's equation. So, let us first start what is calculus of variation? That is, this variational principle. So, this calculus of variation, or we can say the variational principle, it deals with the problems in which the quantity to be minimized or maximized. That is, if you can remember. In case of the Hamilton's principle that we have already discussed, so in that case we have already studied that if we we'll consider the two points that is A and B, if we we'll choose the actual path, this one is your actual path. For that, we have to simply take this L D T integration to be the extremum. The extremum meaning is simply the extremum meaning is the function should be either maximum or minimum. So here this variational principle. It deals with the problems in which the quantity to be minimized or maximized appeared as an integral. Okay, that is this L D T integration either minimized or maximized. So in other word, we can say it gives the necessary condition that the quantity appearing as an integral it has either a minimum or a maximum that is the stationary value. So always this integration over L D T it will give a stationary value. Stationary value means it is your. It may be maximum or it may be minimum. Okay. Now let us consider a function. So here we will consider the function to be y y prime x. So if you can remember when we have considered this L D T integration. So in that case this Lagrangian. This is the function of the q k coordinate. That is the position coordinate and the velocity coordinate q k dot and time coordinate t. Okay, but when this Lagrangian, it is, it depends. It doesn't depend on the time explicitly. So simply by just ignoring this time coordinate, we can say the Lagrangian is the function of the generalized coordinate and the generalized, hmm, sorry, generalized velocity. Now here, if I will consider the function that is f y y prime and x here. This is not t. This is x. That is a position here. So this is x. And defined on a curve y equal to y of x, that is the function depends on the x coordinate between the two point, that is a point x one y one coordinate and the b point x two y two coordinate. And here this y prime means this is your dy by dx, not dy by dt. So here, as we have considered this Lagrangian to be suppose y, and this is dy by dt and t coordinate. And similarly here, if I will consider the function f. Here, this is the function of y dy by dx. That is, in place of t, here you have su simply substituting x and here also x coordinate. Okay, so you can see the difference between these two, the Lagrangian and this the generalized function. That is your f. You can see the difference between the two. Now here, if I will integrate this equation, that function, if I will integrate, this will be i equal to this is your i. This i value equal to the integration from x1 to x2 this is f the function into dx that is we have to choose the path of the integration that is y of x such that so again we have to consider this integration has the stationary value or you can say the extremum value okay it may be maximum or it may be minimum that's why it is called the stationary value so now let us consider the two paths out of the infinite number of possibilities so you can see if i will connect this two point that is i can connect like this so there are these are the infinite of number of paths are possible by connecting this point a and b but here if i will consider only the two path that is this one and this one here this path is your p and this is your p prime here if i will consider out of infinite path if i will consider the only two path let us consider the two path out of the infinite number of possibilities such that the difference between these two for the given value of x it is the variation of y that is delta y so here if i will consider the difference between this path that is your delta y that is this is this axis your y axis so the variation between these two path will be delta y okay and it may be described by introducing a new function eta of x this is your eta function this is eta of x and another function that is your alpha to describe the arbitrary deformation of the path and this alpha will represent the magnitude variation that is this eta of x it will represent the arbitrary deformation of the path 
and that alpha it will say the magnitude variation of the path delta y okay now this eta of x it must satisfy some condition that is the first condition is all the path we have considered the must pass through the fixed point that is p and q that is if i'll consider this two point p and q so here you have considered the two point ab so let me write this as suppose this is your a and b okay so all the varied path must pass through the two point this is your a and b suppose so every point they will pass through this every path they will pass through this point so simply we can write this eta of x1 equal to 0 and eta of x2 that is equal to 0 okay and the next condition is the eta of x must be differentiable so just correct this this is your a and b okay so now when eta of x must be differentiable and here we have to consider the two condition for the eta of x that is eta of x1 0 and eta of x2 0 that is at the two point two end point we can say at this point eta of x1 0 and at this point eta of x2 equal to 0 and the second condition is the function should be differentiable so let a p b be the path along which the a has the stationary value and if i'll consider that path a p prime b this is your neighboring path and this is your supposed actual path so you can see the difference between the two one is actual path and another one is the neighboring path since the variation we have considered is arbitrary but the small value so we can write this delta y equal to if i'll introduce that alpha here so you can see delta y equal to dou y by dou alpha into delta alpha okay now this dou y by dou alpha it is simply represented as eta of x so in this way we represent the alpha and we have introduced eta of x so this dou y by dou alpha equal to your eta of x okay so you will write dou y by dou, dou x equal to eta of x and here this alpha is independent of x it will not depend on the x value and it is common to all the point of the path that is if i'll consider the alpha value but here you can see that the eta of x1 and eta of x2 this value will change because it will depend on the at the end point its value is 0 at the end point a and b its value is 0 but since eta depends on the x value so at every point the eta value changes but here we have to consider since alpha doesn't depend on the x so its value remains constant now you can see here so in this part we can see delta y1 and delta y2 that is the change in displacement at the two point a and b this is the two point a and b so these are the two path one is actual and another one is your neighboring path so at this point if i'll consider the separation between the two path is zero and at this point the separation between the two path is zero that is along this path is your y coordinate this is your along y axis so at this point you can see the they are connected by the at the point a and at this point they will join at that point b so at that point del y1 and delta y2 equal to 0 now if i'll take the derivative with respect to s this is your delta y prime will be equal to this will be eta prime of x since delta alpha doesn't depend on the alpha doesn't depend on the x so simply this can be taken as your constant so delta y prime can be written like this now the integral of the varied path we can write this this is your i prime this is equal to integration from x1 to x2 you can see here we have considered the function this is your i equal to function f f is the function of y y prime and x but here y changes to y plus delta y and y prime changes to y prime plus delta y prime so now the change in the integral now we can write this i prime will be equal to y plus delta y y prime plus delta y prime and x whole into delta x so this is your f into delta x okay so now if i'll put the value of delta y here so this delta y value is eta of x into delta x you can see the delta y value is your eta of x into delta alpha so in place of delta y simply we have substituted this value and in place of delta y prime we have substituted eta prime of x into delta alpha okay now if i will expand in terms of the taylor series expansion that is if you can remember the taylor series this is your sum over nth order derivative of the function divided by n factorial into 
एक्स माइनस एट दैट पॉइंट एक्स नॉट पावर एन और दिस इज सिंपली वी कैन एट दिस इज जेड पावर सॉरी एक्स पावर एन ओके दिस सम लाइक दिस दिस इज एक्स पावर एन एफ एन एक्स एफ एन एट द पॉइंट एक्स नॉट डिवाइडेड बाई एफ एन मीन्स द एन एथ ऑर्डर डेरीवेटिव ऑफ द फंक्शन डिवाइडेड बाई एन फैक्टर इन टू एक्स पावर एन सो ना यू कैन सी द फंक्शन इज लाइक दिस एफ एफ ऑफ दिस मच नाउ इफ एल राइट एंड जस्ट फुट द टेलर सीरीज एक्सपांशन एंड नाउ दिस विल बिकम्स दिस आई प्राइम विल बी इक्वल टू द इंटीग्रेशन फ्रॉम एक्स वन टू एक्स टू द एक्सपांशन द टेलर सीरीज एक्सपांशन फॉर द फंक्शन यू कैन एट द फास्ट फंक्शन प्लस द डेरीवेटिव ऑफ दिस फंक्शन विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू वाई इ टाइम टू डेल्टा एल्फा प्लस डेल्टा एफ डिवाइडेड बाई डेल्टा वाई प्राइम इन टू इटा प्राइम डेल्टा एल्फा इन टू डी एक्स ओके सो नाउ आफ्टर एक्सपांडिंग दिस फंक्शन एंड इफ आई टेक द चेंजेस इन बिटवीन द टू पार्ट दैट इज इफ आई कैलकुलेट डेल्टा आई दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू इंटीग्रल आई प्राइम माइनस आई देन दिस विल बी इक्वल टू इफ यू कैन सी द आई वैल्यू इफ यू कैन रिमेम्बर दिस इज इक्वल टू इंटीग्रेशन ओवर एक्स वन टू एक्स टू एफ वाई वाई प्राइम ऑफ वाई प्राइम एक्स इन टू डी एक्स सिंपली दैट इज सिंपली इफ आई राइट दिस इज योर आई प्राइम वैल्यू सो इफ आई राइट माइनस द इंटीग्रेशन ओवर एफ मीन्स एफ ऑफ वाई वाई प्राइम एक्स इन टू डी एक्स इफ आई राइट सो दिस टर्म एंड माइनस ऑफ दिस टर्म दे विल गेट कैंसल सो द रिमेनिंग टर्म विल बी इक्वल टू दिस प्लस दिस सो दिस विल बी डो एफ बाई डो वाई सो इफ आई कैलकुलेट डेल्टा आई सो दिस विल बी डो बाई डो वाई इन टू इट सो डेल्टा अल्फा इज टेकन कॉमन फ्रॉम दिस टू टर्म सो दिस विल बी डेल्टा एफ बाई डेल्टा वाई इन टू इट प्लस फॉर द सेकेंड टर्म डेल्टा एफ बाई डेल्टा वाई प्राइम इन टू इट प्राइम होल इन टू डी एक्स ओके नाउ इफ आई विल राइट फॉर दिस एक्सप्रेशन दैट इज डेल्टा एफ बाई डेल्टा वाई प्राइम इन टू इट प्राइम इन टू डी एक्स नाउ इफ विल पुट द यू इन टू वी दैट इज इंटीग्रेशन बाई पार्ट इफ विल डू सो दिस इज योर यू दिस इज योर यू इफ विल डू भी इन टू डी एस दैट इज वी डी एस इंटीग्रेशन सो दिस विल बी सिंपली दिस इट प्राइम इज योर डी इट बाई डी एक्स सो डी एस डी एस गेट कैंसल सो डी इट प्राइम विल इंटीग्रेशन विल गिव सो दिस इज योर इट इफ यू कैन रिमेम्बर दिस इट प्राइम लेट मी राइट दिस इट प्राइम इज नथिंग बट डी इट बाई डी एक्स ओके सो दिस इज योर यू पार्ट so u part is written here you have to write u integration v dx so v is your d eta by dx so here the present is eta prime into dx so d eta by dx into dx so this dx dx get cancel so only you have to integrate d eta so integration over d eta will give you eta so this will be eta and integrate you have to x1 to x2 you have to integrate minus so next the second part will be integration over do u by do x into integration v dx whole into dx this is our rule for the u v dx integration when you do the two different function integration so you have to calculate like this now the integration over d by dx of this function that is u do f by do y prime okay into the integration over v dx integration over v dx will give you it and again the dx because here also you have to take the integration v d s the value is eta and again if you will do the integration v d s again you will get eta so i think you can calculate by yourself so after calculating this that is just substituting u v that is integration by parts now this will be you know at the end point we have already i have already told you that eta of x1 at the point a as well as at the point b this eta of x1 and eta of x2 value equal to 0 Now, if I substitute that value in this equation, that is upper limit minus lower limit, this term goes to zero. Okay. Now this will be minus of this term. Okay. So if I substitute this value in this expression, that is delta i. So this will be. You can see this is your first term, do f by do y into it. And for this term, we are substituting this value. So taking d alpha term common. so this is d alpha term is present so taken d alpha term common integration from x1 to x2 so do f by do y this term is here this will be do f by do y okay 
and eta term is also taken common since also eta is present here and the second term will be equal to the second term you can see this is minus of this much so this will be minus of this much whole into dx equal to 0 so in place of dou i by dou y prime eta prime i have to substitute this value okay now after substituting this value you know since i is stationary delta i equal to 0 if i'll consider this integral i equal to stationary this i equal to integration over f dx and it has the value stationary it has it is extremum extremum means maximum and minimum so we can consider f dx integration is stationary so that delta i value will be equal to 0 since delta i equal to 0 so this total term equal to 0 but here since this eta is a function it is depend on the x eta is the function of x so it is arbitrary and the integrand so integrand means this coefficient must be 0 the term that is being multiplied with this eta that will be must equal to 0 since this eta is not equal to 0 so simply we can say that the coefficient of this eta that will be equal to 0 or simply we can write d by dx of dou f by dou y prime minus dou f by dou y equal to 0 that is called the Euler Lagrangian equation okay so this is called the Euler Lagrangian equation so you can see here these are your space coordinate dx is present here okay so if the function of many independent variable yk and their derivatives yk prime so if i will consider the function to be if this we have considered the function like y y prime and x but if i will consider there are many number of coordinates are present that is yk nth number of coordinates or kth number of coordinates are present and this is your y k prime and x the function is represented like this so simply this suppose if i let this i term that is to be delta s so this will be delta over x1 to x2 integration this f part into ds that is equal to 0 now simply we can write this euler lagrangian equation becomes d by dx of dou f by dou y k prime minus dou f by dou y k equal to 0 okay where k equal to 1 2 and so on so you can see the difference between the lagrangian equation and the euler lagrangian equation if you can remember the lagrangian equation is your d by dt of dou l by dou q k dot minus dou l by dou q k equal to 0 this is your lagrangian equation but in case of the euler lagrangian equation the t term goes to x this is just the difference between these two so this is all for today thank you all